Today we're gonna talk about 5 ways to speed up your renders inside Blender. We're gonna discuss something that every 3D artist has to deal with. That's right, we're gonna talk about render times. No one likes it, but everyone has to go through it. With the steps we're gonna talk about in this video, you should be able to render your work in a considerably shorter period of time. We're gonna see some obvious stuff. But there are also other things that you might not even consider when you are trying to create the final render. This video is brought to you by Drop and Render, one of the best and easiest render farms that you can use with Blender. And coincidentally, they have an excellent add-on integration in Blender, but more on that later. So render time. I think this is one of the things that everyone can agree with. Constantly waiting to see the result of your work is daunting and time-consuming especially if you have to go back constantly and adjust some stuff. This whole process, while inevitable, it is understandably tedious. Sometimes it is what it is, and there is nothing you can do about it to speed up the process. But today, you might find something that helps you chip down on that time, even if it is just a little bit, because let's be honest, every second counts. Alright, first things first. We will start with the obvious. A good machine can go a long way to speed up not only your render time, but also the workflow in general across the board. A better machine will most likely give you the best result across everything we're gonna talk about today. A powerful GPU, CPU, and a good amount of RAM will definitely help you work and more importantly, render faster. Nowadays, most of the common and known render engines are GPU accelerated, so taking advantage of that horsepower is a no-brainer. If you have some cash to spare and you want to invest in your work, having a powerful graphics card is a better option. But GPU prices are not cheap by any means, especially lately. And this will put this option outside of the budget of a lot of people. But if upgrading your system isn't an option for you, you might just consider using a render farm, which we're gonna talk about later. Now, enough talking about hardware, and now let's talk about business. Things that you can do inside Blender to reduce your render time. And we're gonna start with the Adaptive Sampling Threshold, first introduced in Blender 2.83 release. So, Adaptive Sampling reduces the number of samples in areas that have a little noise for the sole purpose of better and faster rendering quality. When talking about decreasing the render time, the first thing anyone would recommend is to decrease the sample count. And while that is all good and dandy, Blender has a new way of doing this now. Adaptive sampling can decrease your render time by more than 80%, and your gains will largely depend on your scene. But by using this, you are giving Blender the freedom to choose whether an area of an image is clear enough to apply the denoiser or too noisy, in which case, keep ranking up those samples. And this is the brilliance of using a threshold. Instead of applying a single sample count across every pixel on an image, you let Blender distribute those samples across different areas of the image, and if the noise threshold is reached, then the rendering will stop. By default, the noise threshold is set to 0.01, which is way lower than it needs to be. Most of the time, 0.05 to 0.1 will look just as good and will lower the render times considerably. The next option for reducing render time is a lot easier to grasp. So when you set up and position your camera in the scene, sometimes there are other objects outside of the frame of the camera. And all that geometry is also included in the calculation when rendering. However, this geometry will not be seen in the final render. So to optimize your render time, it is better to delete or restrict the rendering of any object that is not contributing to the final render, which makes sense. And this is even more apparent when using a particle system in general, like grass, hair, trees, rocks, and so on. To do that in cycles, it's fairly straightforward. On the Render Properties tab, scroll down until you find the section labeled Simplify. There are a lot of things that you can simplify here, some of which we're gonna see in the next point. But the one we are looking for is called Culling. Go ahead and expand it, and you will find two parameters, the Camera Culling and Distance Culling. The first one displays automatically calls object based on the camera first sim defined by the margin. The distance call, however, calls objects based on their distance, I mean the distance from the active camera. This way, you can make sure that only objects within the camera field of view are being rendered, which is exactly the point of doing this. Nonetheless, working this way is a bit tedious 
because you need to set each object to be callable by the camera in the object properties panel. But you can also select everything and hold alt while checking the box, which will save you a lot of time. Still, a better option will be using an add-on. There are a lot of free add-ons out there that will help you set a camera calling automatically, so you are better off using one of those and it will really help you to render faster. Talking about simplifying stuff, you can also try lowering the vortex count of your scene, which will help reduce the render time a lot, especially the loading at the beginning. If you have a problem with a big scene where you get an auto memory error, then this will definitely help you. Under the same simplify tab, you have two tabs, one for the viewport and the other one for render. The viewport tab, of course, controls how much geometry and child particles and volume resolution are in the viewport. While working, there is also a texture limit field where you can specify an exact texture resolution to speed up the viewport. On the render side, this will obviously control the final result. So limiting the subdivision here in the final render will affect the quality, but it will also speed up the rendering process. The max subdivision is applied globally across all objects in the scene, and you can also limit the text resolution and the amount of charged particles during the render. Another important option for a lot of big studios, professionals, and artists is to turn to render farms when they need to speed up their rendering process. And render farms is exactly what you're thinking about. Having thousands of parallel GPUs working simultaneously for the purpose of finishing your renders as fast as possible, which is a dream come true for a lot of artists. That's why movie studios always use render farms. They are just faster, plain, and simple. That's why using them makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Dividing your project across multiple machines will be faster than dumping the workload on any single machine, no matter how powerful it is. And lately, render farm prices are going down considerably, making them a viable option for all professionals and even hobbyists who want to finish their projects fast. One of these render farms is Drop and Render. You can install the Drop and Render add-on inside Blender, and once it is set up, you can basically just hit Render and get your project rendered in the cloud. This is not only way faster than any single machine by itself, but it also allows you to keep working on your project while this is happening in the background, which is amazing. The Drop and Render Blender add-on has some really awesome and neat features. For example, it is able to recreate your project setup exactly the same in the farm down to every detail like the version of Blender you are using, the same render engine, and even add-ons that you have. It also has a smart sync system that allows you to confidently transfer all your data to the cloud. To start using Drop and Render, you can simply click the link below and make a free account. Download the Drop and Render Manager app and install it. This manager is going to be the bridge between your system and the farm. Once installed, you can log into your account and you will be prompted to install the add-on for Blender. Click yes and you are all set. In Blender, you have a very neat feature that comes with the add-on in the form of a check scene button, which analyzes a long list of settings inside your scene to make sure that your project will render correctly. Things like output settings, active camera, frame range, render engine, etc. When everything is ready, you can click submit project and you are done. You can follow the progress of your render through the manager app or the web UI. There is also a mobile application to keep track of your work, and if you click the link below, you will get a ton box worth of credit just to try it and see how everything is gonna work for you. Generally speaking, there are a lot of other ways to speed up your render times in addition to your workflow in general. Most of it comes down to knowing what you need, and sometimes it is about lowering sample counts, other times maybe using an add-on, but most of the time in general, it is about being smart and using the resources you have intelligently. If we missed any of these methods, please leave a comment down below about the go-to method to render faster, and if you are interested in drop and render, you will find the necessary links in the description. I hope you found this video useful, if you did, please give it a thumbs up, you can also check some of our previous videos, thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.